Good morning and how are you today? Great to see you. I have another weird and wonderful wine recipe, one that's ideal to make this time of year. End of July, start of August, and that is thistle wine. You can either use milk thistle or Scottish thistle. There's all sorts of types of thistle up there, but they all make really good wine. So next time you're out in the countryside and dare to embrace your inner Scotsman, why not go and forage those thistles. What you need to do is to harvest those lovely purple seed heads. End of July, start of August, when they're starting to dry out, is the ideal, perfect time to do it. Before they get that fluffy white top on top, that cotton type white fluff. So do it when they're purple, do it end of July, start of August, and you'll be quits in. You don't need that many. So it won't take too long to collect the thistles, nor will you get too poked with those horrible, nasty spikes they have. The amount you need is about one standard wine glass full, or about half of my standard wine glass. Anyway, so once you've brought those home, trim off all of the stems. You only want the seed heads and a tiny bit of foliage under the seed heads to keep them all intact. I made this thistle wine last year and it turned out to be exceptional. The recipe I created did not need tweaking at all, so I'm quite happy to bring this recipe to you. First thing we need to do is throw your wine glass full of thistle heads into a large saucepan. The first thing we need to do to get this wonderful thistle wine recipe underway is to shove your glass of thistle heads straight into a large saucepan. So shove them straight in. The next thing on top of your thistle heads we want to add is the juice of one lemon. So shove that in as well. The lemon juice will help add the acidity, acidic acid that adds a good after bite to the wine and also it does slightly help the yeast work and do its job really well so shove that lemon juice in you could add the chunks of the lemon as well if you fancy but i found last time i did this i didn't need to because i used the rind and else just following the recipe i used last year next thing on top of your lemon juice top of your thistles is a mug of really strong builder's tea no milk black shove that in as well this tea will help the tannins. And the tannins do add a lot to the character of the wine. You wouldn't think it, but the tea is fantastic, really cementing the wine in your mouth. Then, what else do we need to add? We need to add your sugar. I told you this recipe was really, really straightforward and simple. So shove 1.2 kilograms of sugar straight in to the saucepan, on top of your thistles, on top of your lemon juice, on top of the cup of tea, and tea bag as well. The tea bag's in there. So shove in your sugar. Brilliant stuff. Right there. What we need to do now is add the rest of the sugars. And the rest of the sugars going in there as well. So that's 1.2 kilograms of sugar on top of a wine glass of thistle heads juice of one lemon, tea, a big mug of tea with a tea bag in, no milk, and the next thing we're going to be adding is 200 grams of raisins. So shove your raisins in there. Again, like the tea, and like the lemon juice, the raisins don't add to the overall flavour of the wine, they add to the characteristic of the wine, to the palates. Not so much a flavour profile, but a texture and a mouthfeel of the wine. Then, on top of your thistle heads, on top of the lemon juice, on top of the cup of tea, on top of the raisins and on top of the sugar, you'll pour over four litres of water. Obviously, the reason you're adding water to the wine is to make it wet. Otherwise, you'll just be left with stewed raisins, lemon juice, tea and thistle heads. Now what we want to do is simply turn the heat on and let it simmer away for about 10, 15 minutes. You want the flavour of the thistle heads to extract into the juice and also the raisins to admit their venosity into that lovely water and the wine and the sugar to dissolve with the tea and the lemon juice. Brilliant stuff. So whack the heat on under it, give it a stir and let it simmer away for about 10, 15 minutes or so whilst you go have a cup of tea and I'll be back with you when I've refreshed my coffee cup. See you in a minute now. With your thistle heads all infused in the liquid and smelling divine and brilliant and the colour of the liquid turned a lovely golden brown straw-like colour, you want to let it cool, cool enough to put into the demijohn without the demijohn cracking. So once mine is cooled, I'll be back in a second now. 
Oh, brilliant stuff. I can't wait to show you the rest of this recipe. It is brilliant, it is, this wine. Fantastic. Back in a second now. With a brewed food and down and a hot brew in your hands, we can progress to the Denny John stage. So grab yourself a funnel with a pair of ladies' tights in the middle to create a bit of modern art that resembles something or other. Dead simple it is. Just filter all the heads out through the pair of tights into the demijohn, get all the liquid, brilliant, easy, happy days. It's almost a shame that the beautiful violet purple colours of the thistles don't come out in the wine. However, if you did want to have more of a reddish tinge to the wine, more of a lilac -y colour, you can go out and add a few cups of rose petals to the wine. I tried that last year with the rose petals and it came out to be such a beautiful colour. And I'll probably make a video on that at some point soon. Because there is not enough wine videos about thistles. My oh my oh my. Yeah. Oh, my coffee. my coffee over. I am always making a mess, I am. The colour and the aroma of the wine is brilliant. You really should make this wine. Go for it. And if you do, let me know in the comments down below if you try it. What do you think of it? And if you are as excited about this wine as I am. Anyway, I'm going to add a dash of cold water to this wine now to bring it up the level slightly to the shoulder level of your dinner chop and also cool it down so we can add the yeast because you don't want to be adding the yeast when the liquid, the must, is too hot. And I'll give that a quick swirl. No, that is still too warm for my liking. You do not want to be pitching yeast to a liquid that is too hot, otherwise the yeast won't work. It'll be a waste of time, a waste of money. So I'll be back with you in half an hour when my wine has cooled down and we'll pitch the yeast. Back in a minute now. And I'm back, right there. My wine has cooled down brilliantly, perfectly, fantastically. So we can add the yeast. I'm using a general purpose wine yeast for this wine because I don't think it needs anything too brilliant to bring out the flavours. The flavours are there. I am not sure what the best yeast would be for this wine. I would have to have a play around over a few years and work out the prime yeast for this wine. But it does not really matter. Yeast will ferment. It will turn it into alcohol. It will do what you want it to do. The only thing we need to worry about is getting it going. So, pour in your yeast. Just sprinkle in about a teaspoon or so. In it goes. And also, you'll be adding a teaspoon of yeast nutrient to the wine because the thistles wouldn't have enough nutrients to really feed the yeast and make them happy and have a big party in there. Yeast nutrient is like nibbles at a party. Without it, you can still have a good time. However, nibbles at a party do help everything go a lot more smoothly and without any issues. So, provide the yeast nutrient, provide the nibbles at the party, and the yeast will have a fine time turning that liquid, that sugar, into the alcohol which you're after in your wine. So with that said and done, I'm going to insert an airlock into the demijohn, and you know what to do now, let it stand, let it ferment, let that initial figure, fervid fermentation take place, and those yeasts nibble on the nibbles and have a party, and turn all that liquid into alcohol. Top it up in two, three, four days time to the neck level. And then brilliant, let it stand, let it ferment to dryness. Ferment it for three or four months. It might take that long, especially as now the weather's starting to cool down because we're going into autumn. So you want to pick your thistle heads in July, August, peak summer. By the time this starts fermenting and ferments fully, it might go into autumn and the temperatures start cooling down. And if you enjoy it, foraging for your wine making ingredients, why don't you go and check out this video up by here for another foraged wine recipe. And I'll see you all really soon now, and you have fun.